Hey guys, it's February 5th, 2021. We're back for Fun Fact Fridays. Um, guys, I'd like to remind you that my series, I've done two parts already on the series dealing with computer specs and how it pertains to music production. So definitely check those out. There'll be links in the description for part one and part two. Part one, I did CPUs. Part two, I did RAM. I talked about RAM, broke down RAM. Anyway, so let's just get into this right away. So I got some more pianos and reverbs. That was the focus for this week. Um, there's not much news to do for today. Um, it's pretty much just going to be notable um, new plugin releases, free plugins. So let's deal with the main focus for today, which is the pianos and the reverbs first. Then we'll get into the notable release news of new plugins for the week. All right. So the free app for this Monday, sorry, <laughs> the free app for this Friday is um, number one, uh, Neo Piano. It has, this is weird because when you look this up, it doesn't say Neo Piano. It's from Sound Magic. It says Piano One when you look it up. But it is called Neo Piano. Like when I pull it up, when you look it up, the DLL file says Neo Piano. It'll show up under your plugin list. It, on the mine, it shows up as Neo Piano. So, um, it's either Neo Piano or Piano One. I don't know which one it is, but it's funny because if you rearrange, rearrange the letters in the word Neo, it spells one. <laughs> so, I don't know. Anyway, let's look at the interface real quick. It has a built-in reverb. You can turn it on, turn it off. And um, it's interesting because they give you a lot of controls over your reverb. You got your reverb time, the width, the mix surface which is interesting smooth and you have early reflection um over here we have some uh, shaping that you could do with the noises that you would get from the piano so the pedal how intense how loud the pedal sounds are the strings the hammer offs all that good stuff over here we have some dampening you could dampen different sounds and also we have resonance down here we have a tuning system. Over here we have key dynamics, which is basically dealing with the velocity curve, how your velocity response is gonna be based on how hard you're hitting the keys and how sensitive you want the velocity to be. We got some harmonic over here to shift some harmonic uh, responses. This tone area is basically like a very, 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 very rough EQ. You got low, high, and then lid, which is basically if the lid is closed, open, or anywhere in between. And then they have perspective, player, and audience, which is very interesting. So they give you a lot right here to go off to really tweak and um, customize the sound to how you want it. And at the bottom here, we have um, your master output volume control. Up here, we have presets. They give you some presets to get started, and then... There's a list here where you can basically, I guess, save more of your own presets as you choose once you tweak and come up with different sounds that you like, different styles of pianos. So that's the interface. Let's just uh, preview the sound really, really quickly. So that's pretty much it. Let's move on to the next piano. That. All 
All right, so next we got this one right here. So this is um from Orcus Tool Piano. It's called um, OT Piano or OT Pianos. No, actually it's OT Piano S. Excuse me. I stand corrected. All right, first of all, let's get this interface to look bigger. Um, right here, well, let me just make this bigger and then you can see it. Then I can explain how quirky this interface is. So, um, first of all, I don't like the colors of this interface. <laughs> they need more contrasting colors, a little bit more brighter, but whatever. At first, the interface is very weird, very daunting with these bars, but once you kind of focus in, it kind of makes sense. Next weird thing is to um, click on these buttons most of them you have to click and drag to the right <laughs> and if you don't do that it's like hit or miss like I'm clicking right now and nothing's happening and then sometimes it works because I probably didn't stop moving or something I don't know but basically you're supposed to click and drag to the right it's so weird and then once you're done, you have to come back and click and drag to the right for it to go away. It's very weird. But anyway, um, under here you have your settings and you can change the UI size. So, um, yeah. Otherwise, there's compression. You can turn it off. Once again, click and drag just to make sure that it responds to what you're doing. But once the compression is on, you have uh, threshold and ratio, and you're just basically moving these bars up and down. Down here, we have um, E1 tone, E2 release, noises. These are just different noises and um, tones that you're gonna change to shape the timbre and the response of the piano to just give it a different feel. Image, I'm figuring that's dealing with width. Uh, then over here we have delay sorry over here you have the controls for the reverb which reverb controls is over here turn that on and then you have slider so um, that's pre delay I think that's dry this is wet this is dampening this is high cut this is your overall volume like I said the interface is weird you got to really pay attention to what you're looking at down at the bottom and up top and how it corresponds with the bar and I guess once you move it you know it's showing you the number of whatever the value is that you're entering in so after a while you get used to it but it's weird at first um, up here you have the different types of reverb so you got studio a studio B all these different types of halls plates B plates spring reverb all that stuff and um, over here we have EQ, you turn the EQ on and you can EQ. So it gives you a lot of controls as far as shaping your sound built right into the UI, which is good. <laughs> it, it's just a little quirky at first, but once you get used to it, it's, it's usable. Uh, down here where it says piano forte, this is where you would see your preset, so you bring it up, and you have classic. Let's, let's do some, let's check out some sounds, see what it sounds like. Hopefully I didn't mess anything up too much. Let's try to give this thing a little bit more volume. See how that works. Go back here. That's dark. Okay. Let's look at this old gran. A lot of these sound the same to me. This one sounds a little different. It 
they have all these categories with um different presets and i guess it's just a combination of them changing up all the settings the reverb the delay the sorry the pre-delay on the reverb the eq and the compression Then they got some weird stuff down here. Jumanji. Interesting. So anyway, you get the point. There's a lot to play with here. Very interesting. Of course, guys, all the links for everything I discuss will be in the description. All right, moving right along, we got reverbs. So this set right here, this is um, Dragonfly. They have um, a bundle of reverbs. It comes with four reverbs. And um, I really like these reverbs for just like everyday reverb usage. Especially when I'm building like a virtual room to um, sit some vocals in with a mix. And usually you want to set up a couple of um, effect auxiliary buses. And you pan like, you know, a very early reflection, short reverb, almost like a slapback delay type reverb on one side. Then you have something a little bit darker, a little bit longer on the other side. And then even if you want, you could add another, a third one. And you're panning these reverbs left and right to create that virtual space that you're going to put all your vocals in and maybe your instruments or whatever. And I, I just really like the response that this, um, these reverbs give you. They're not over the top. The interface is pretty simple, but they still give you a lot of control because you have even like right here you have level control of your dry level early level early send late level and um there's eqing and diffusing and all this other stuff and then each reverb is geared towards a specific thing so this is the early reflections this is more for hall reverbs this one is plate and we have room so um very versatile bundle you can even use probably like most of them you could just use that one three different instances on three different effect bosses and really tailor your room the way you need it so definitely check out the dragonfly reverb bundle and last but not least, I did mention that I was going to bring another one this week. And it's another convolution reverb called Convology XT. So um, I'm not going to explain what a, a convolution reverb is again. I did earlier on in the week. Go check out the video. So you have impulse responses here that it comes with. They also give you the option to browse so if you have your own impulse response files that you have collected from the past or created in the past you can use them right in this reverb but in the factory library you notice they have all these different categories and they give you a good amount of reverbs yes i'm still streaming okay beautiful so they give you a good amount of different uh, impulse response files which basically works out to reverbs different presets and you still have controls over let me see let's pull this up you have controls over the start and t attack time so you can actually manipulate how this plugin is interacting and utilizing your impulse response with start attack hold release uh, they have modulation here 
there's an EQ here you can just click on frequency then you hit this and the EQ is turned on and you have all these nodes to start dialing in some EQ to really shape your reverb it's always good to EQ your reverb guys it's another piece of audio on your track it needs to be shaped and given its own frequency space so that's a quick tip right there <laughs> you thought you were just here for free plugins anyway one cool thing um like the other convolution reverb i spoke about earlier this week they have reverse so you can actually get reverse reverb right out of here for your reverse reverb needs uh, they actually have normalizing. You can normalize the wave file. If your wave file is too quiet, you need to be louder. There's a normalize button. We have scale, decay, stretch, pre-delay time, which is always useful. And we have mix with an output. So that's pretty much it. Those are your two pianos and two reverbs to wrap up the week of pianos and reverbs. All right, let's really, really, really quickly jump into some plugins for the week. We have um, Ural EQ, we have Symbol Killer, and Drum Snapper from the same developer. We also have one called Crush and Basic Filter, which these two are also from the same uh, developer. We got Tiny Comp, which is from the same company that made Tiny Dist from last week, last Friday's video. And we have Flower Pots. So real quick, I'll just show you some images. I'm not gonna go into it. These are just um, new plugins that was released this week. New free plugins that was released just this week. They're always coming out, guys. Always releasing. So we have uh, Symbol Killer and Drum Snapper. This is what they look like. This one is basically like a gate for drums. It's a very configurable, highly detailed, detailed gate for drums. Um, if you had like too much bleed. Specifically for live drums, I should say. If you had too much bleed on your snare mic and you got the overhead cymbals in there, you can try to use this to um, intelligently configure it to gate out the unwanted background noises. And I mean, I guess you can use it for other features, other sounds too, not just for drums, but that's the main reason why it was... Um, Designed. That's why it's called Symbol Killer. And the Drum Snapper is basically a transient shaper. So next we have... Uh, 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 we have this um, multiband processor. So it has multiband compressing, delay, and balance controls. So definitely check that one out. What's next? What is next? We have Flower Pots. Now, Flower Pots is a VST instrument. It's a sound generator, and they basically sampled a lot of pots, supposedly Flower Pots. I'm going to actually do like a demo on this one on Monday and probably something else from this same company because they make very interesting VSTs like this. So it's a bunch of presets where it's a bunch of samples of pots, different types of pots flower pots essentially and um sounds are very interesting very inspiring and very usable next we have um crush and basic filter basic filter is a filter and crush is a bit crusher plugin and then we have tiny comp which like i said in last week's video we talked about tiny dist which was a distortion foot pedal style plugin this is uh, a compressor but it has some other features i think it has upward and downward compression and it has gating features also so definitely check those out guys and i think that's about it 
for the video. Um, like I said, check out the video series that I started on computer specs and how it relates to music production as far as you knowing what you need to get based on your workload and what you need to get done. Um, we did part one, part two. Part one was on CPUs, part two was on RAM. The link is in the description for those videos. Definitely check them out, guys. Thank you for watching this video. And as always, you'll see me in the next video. Join me Monday for free app Mondays as we continue three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. All right, guys, I'm out.